Hey guys, it's Troy here. Wanted to share with you a pen that I picked up a little while ago. And uh, it is by a brand that I wasn't overly familiar with, but I've run across pen friends who have got the Kilk brand pen in their collection. K-I-L-K. -K. Kilk is a brand that is made in Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul, Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, Constantinople. Now, quite honestly, I don't have any Turkish made pens here in my collection except this one. This is the Novo Baroque. The Novo Baroque fountain pen as it says right there on the box and this is the actual box that came with my particular pen. Well um, I had this particular pen on watch for quite a while. I sat, I looked at it, I was waiting for perhaps a good bargain on it to, to pop up. Uh, Gold Spot Pens had it for sale on their website and also on their eBay platform. Uh, and quite honestly, um, I hadn't pulled the trigger on it and it just sat on my watch list for quite a while. And then I ran across Penultimate Dave. Um, you know, I've been following Dave for quite a while. He and I have corresponded a little bit from time to time. Uh, and he posted something on Instagram where he got the chance to try this particular pen. And uh, I asked him how he liked it, and he said, well, you know, it's a little different. It's, uh, he basically, um, he said it writes a, a little finer um, than he expected it to. Um, and I told him, well, you know, I had it on my watch list in a broad anyway. So I went ahead and ordered the broad nib. This particular pen, the Kilk, comes in a plain black box with the Kilk logo on it. You open it up, they include a polishing, it looks to be a polishing cloth, and I have not opened that up and taken it out of that package. And they've got a little card here, Kilk, exclusive writing instruments, the Novo Baroque fountain pen with their warranty, premium tortoise resin body, um, gold colored nib, gold color trim accents, um, and a cartridge converter filling system warranted for two years for any possible defects due to manufacturing. They include a little use and care guide along with it. Not that there's a whole lot to that. And here sits the pen itself. One of the things about this particular pen, the Novo Baroque in a tortoise shell brown. I'm not a huge fan of brown pens, but I look through the entire catalog that I saw available online for Kilk and this was the best looking of them all in my opinion. The cigar shape is absolutely beautiful. I do like and appreciate the cigar shape. In addition to that, um, you know, it's it's got a floral ornament all the way around that particular cat band. And it doesn't have a clip, but it does have a roll stop and a little floral right there as well. Now, this particular pen is supposed to revisit and inspired by um, the Turkish Baroque and Rococo period of the Ottoman art. Um, and I just really appreciate that. Now, and these, these floral patterns that go around that particular cat band... Um, it's supposed to be inspired by, and I'm going to try to pronounce it, I may get it horribly wrong, but uh, the Dolma Bachi Palace on the Bosphorus. Um, and that particular palace, here's a picture of it, uh, was built between the years 1843 and 1856, and it served as the main administrative center of the Ottoman Empire for quite a while. So, a little bit of background on that. Tortoise shell. You know, I've had a tortoiseshell cat. She was beautiful. <laughs> um, tortoiseshell resin. You know, this acrylic resin is, was, I thought, beautiful. I, I, Like I said, I'm not much on browns. I'm just really not. But I was really impressed with it. And, of course, the classic cigar shape just really appealed to me. All right, so it is a twist cap. And just one and a half turns and you're out. All acrylic cap with the uh, gold colored or the gold plating coloring um, on that band and you look here and you have a number six Bach nib with the Kilk brand on that nib 
And it is a cartridge converter pen. You open it up. And it does take a converter. Um, it came with a converter. It did not come with a cartridge. It did, did come with a converter in it. So uh, you can tell that I've actually run that converter up some. And I've used it quite a bit. And I'll tell you about my writing experience here in just a little bit. So close that up. Now, it's a good size pen. I enjoyed this pen as far, in terms of its appearance, in terms of how it uh, fits in the hand. It's like a five and a half inch pen. Uh, and it's a full one ounce in weight. So there is a little heft to it, especially on that cap. That cap band actually adds a good amount of weight to that particular pen. So if you wanted to post it, it's not postable. They don't intend for it to be postable. So don't even try. Besides, that would really back weight that pen quite a bit. All right. So you got that gold plated nib or that uh, gold colored stainless steel nib on it. Um, and uh, it fits really well in my hand. I like the way it fits. I like the way I hold it. I do like a few things aesthetically about it. But do I like how it writes? Yeah, we'll be back and we'll talk about that. about how I like the size of this particular pen. It fits good in my hand. It's, it's a hefty pen. I enjoy it. How does it stack up to some other pens that are out there? Well, here we go. A Waterman Karen. Let's go ahead and set that beside it. The ubiquitous Pilot Metropolitan. You have to include a Pilot Metropolitan. Everybody knows a Pilot Metropolitan, which is the main reason why I pull one out every single time. How about an old Parker 45? And just for grins, a Twisby Eco. So you can see how the Novo Baroque stacks up against some of the other pens that you may be familiar with, uh, in case you are just wondering for perspective. Now, the real test of any pen is how does it perform? I mean, this absolutely gorgeous pen, <laughs> and like I said, I, I didn't think I'd really like a brown pen, but when I saw this one, I said, that is definitely one to watch. And uh, I figured I'll go ahead and pull the trigger and give it a shot. So let's go ahead and put the nib to paper because if it writes great, then it was a good investment for a $165 pen uh, at Gold Spot Pens. It would, it would have been a really good investment. Now, if it writes horribly, then it's a bad investment. So let's put nib to paper. So this is the Kilk. I will say that little hard start that it had there, every single time I go to write with it, it has a little bit of a hard start. And oftentimes, um, it writes a little bit, even though it looks really wet here, Sometimes, it, if you don't put any pressure at all down on it and you just let the weight of the pen, um, it seems to have an ink starvation issue. And I worked on the nib a little bit to try to get a little more ink flow out of it. Um, I haven't been tremendously um, successful with that, but this is the Novo Baroque and the Tortoiseshell. Um, this has a number six, and this uh, is a Bach, and it is a stainless steel nib. Now, I am not a fan of this ink at all. <laughs> I pulled one out that I thought, all right, let's see how well it pairs with this. Uh, but this um, this particular ink, definitely not one of my favorites. An organic studios foggy bottom C 
sepia. Now when you go to write with it here, it actually does okay. It's not as dry as it could be. This is a Rhodia pad. When I was writing earlier on just an ordinary piece of note paper, it really was a little dry because, you know, regular old paper sucks in uh, the ink, drinks it in just a little bit. And it didn't write really, really well. I will tell you it writes better on Rhodia. Um, and it writes better on Rhodia than it did on Clairefontaine paper, which I was using for a lot of letter writing. So it does perform better on Rhodia. Now, here's what I'm going to do. See that hard start right there too? Not a fan of that. See, just doing this here like I normally would do, my little curves, my little swirlies that I like to do. Um, you know, it it was skipping quite a bit. It was it was little ink starved, and you can get a little bit of flex out of it and get a little bit of uh, line variation when you get a much darker line and get a wetter line. But certainly, I shouldn't have to uh, press down that hard on a stainless steel nib in order to get some kind of action out of it. Just not a fan. I'm, I don't like that at all. So I was a little disappointed. Now, I really want to like this pen. So here's what I decided that I'm going to do. I'm going to take this pen I'm going to give it a really good flushing. I'm going to get rid of this nasty looking sepia ink that I really don't like. And I'm going to put into it um, another ink that I know that I've used and I trust. And let's go ahead and give it another try here in just a little bit to see if it does any better. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I know it was just instantaneous for you, but here I am. And I did go ahead and give it a good flushing, and I tried a different ink in this particular pen. This time I decided I'm going to go with a tried and true uh, brand, Waterman, uh, with the Absolute Brown, which I thought would go well with the brown tortoise shell. I'm reminded, too, as I was going to flush it out, uh, one feature I do like about this particular pen uh, that uh, Kilk does do is they use a screw-in converter. So it's not just friction fit. You put it in and you screw it down in, uh, and it fits very nicely and tightly. Um, and, you know, I've got zero complaints about the craftsmanship of the Kilk Novo Baroque. I've got no complaints about the aesthetic, about the feel of it at all. Um, I do have a complaint about the way it wrote previously. So, did it improve? A good flushing and an ink that I trust. Well, let's give it another shot. So let's go um, move the pad up a little bit. So the Kilk Novo Baroque. And I am trying this time with a Waterman ink. Much better. I mean, I, I can't say it's uh, you know a 100% improvement, but definitely an improvement. So a good flushing, and that's one of the things I found sometimes with pens when it's a new pen. If it doesn't perform real well, give it another shot. Give it a good flushing with a bulb syringe, some just simple bulb syringe and water, and that's all I just did here. All right, so I cleaned everything out, flushed it out real well. And I used an ink that I know was going has performed well for me previously. So let's uh, take another look at its wetness here. Eh, the wetness hasn't really improved, but the flow certainly has. So I, I think between the flushing and, and the better ink that is in it, and definitely a better looking ink. I mean, this right here um, reminds me of something that came out of a diaper. <laughs> uh, whereas this down here, okay, it's a little better. So, improvement. It's not the smoothest nib in the world. It's not, um, it's not horrendous either. Not, not, definitely not the best nib I've written with here recently, but 
like I said, still improved performance over what I had, and certainly this is a broad nib. I would not consider this broad. I would consider that more on the medium side, which, so it makes me glad that I ordered in the broad nib. So, my overall thoughts, gorgeous pen, good craftsmanship. Um, I mean, the aesthetics and the balance of it, how it holds in the hand, the, the classic cigar shape, absolutely fantastic. Love it. Um, writing experience, at first, eh, it's improved now that I gave it a, another shot and wanted to make sure I got all that here on the recording uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, to be fair, because, you know, it could have just used a good flushing and a better ink, and a good flushing and a better ink did help. Um, not, still not a tremendous over-the-top improvement, but still better. And, um, you know, and I actually did do a little bit of nib manipulation at one point, in all fairness, um, in disclosure, to try to get it to be a little wetter than it was with that sepia ink when I was using it. So, uh, overall, I'm happy with it now that it writes better than it did. Um, I'm very happy with the aesthetic. I'm happy with everything else about the pen. Um, I will now reach for it more often, especially since I just filled it <laughs> with, with some ink. Uh, so I will probably use this more than I have been and actually make it my pen of the day a little more often than I have, uh, just because I'm a little happier with how it writes at this moment than I was when I first started this video.